Can you hear this car alarm? Oh my god, of course it stopped when I opened my door. Okay. Nope, there it is. Dear Hank and John, or as John likes to think of it, dear John and Hank, thank you for what you've done for the past few years. For everyone, of course, but I just want to tell my story. It's been a rough few years, it turns out, for all of us in a macro collective way. And individually, we've all suffered capital T and lowercase t traumas. 2020 was rough. That year, I felt especially isolated. After moving from San Francisco to Portland and living with best friends, I went through a big breakup of a, a long relationship. And then I lived alone for the rest of that year, and it was hard. You two were always these like characters on the internet. I would see your things occasionally, especially like the, the stuff you did for each other's birthdays. But I'm not nerd fighteria. I wasn't always there. I'm not a part of that community. John, I also watched your wife Sarah's art assignment channel on YouTube a lot in early lockdown while still in San Francisco. That became our sort of, you know, medieval royalty must have entertainment while eating food entertainment. Every time we would eat a meal, we'd put on an episode of the art assignment. Please pass along to Sarah. That is so good. I understand why people take a step back. And at the same time, I really miss that channel. She did such a brilliant thing. John, your episode of the linen bust in Antarctica was so good. And the sort of pairing that you did with Kurzgesagt in a nutshell. I will never Kurzgesagt. Kurz. Kurz. Hmm have their calendar of your life that obviously I've not filled in all the way. How do you say their name? Kurzgesagt. That doesn't sound right. Kurzgesagt? Kurzgesagt. Kurz in a nutshell. About the Lascaux cave paintings. It was such a good episode. That is just like a warm blanket for my brain and my like ADHD and autism, like special interest. Yes, give me that thing. That is a, a little nugget of knowledge and story that I will keep and I will share and repeat. So I like rediscovered you during pandemic. This is a bristlecone pine. They can live to be 10,000 years. So it kind of became the mascot symbol of the long now. I'm a member of the Long Now. Someone somewhere in that orbit mentioned the Anthropocene Reviewed. And this is when it was just a podcast that resonated with me because it was the right time and place. I like the Long Now and their sort of big here, Long Now vision of the last 10,000 years, and the next 10,000 years. And so the Anthropocene Reviewed seemed like a sort of clever idea. And I listened to one and I was hooked. I loved the five star review format. The Anthropocene Reviewed podcast hit for me the way cereal did. It came out on Friday, but that really meant like Thursday night at midnight. So I would actually stay up and listen to it Thursday night like it was a, you know, FDR era, like radio cereal. I would put my phone on my bed next to my head and just lay there and listen to the radio, not while doing something else, not doing chores. I would just listen to cereal. And that's what Anthropocene Reviewed became for me in 2020. There were already several episodes out when I discovered it. So I was able to binge sometimes. I was able to just like sit there and be in a single episode. It was there for me in the same way that Ted Lasso was. Ted Lasso was exactly the thing that I needed. And it turns out billions of other people needed at that moment, that time and place. And your podcast was too. It was exactly what I needed. And then I ran out because you finished slash focused on finishing the book. And then I was like, what am I going to do? I want to hear John Green talking about stuff some more. And then I brain eating amoeba. But then I learned or relearned about the Dear Hank and John, or as you like to think of it, Dear John and Hank podcast. And oh my gosh, I had more Green Brothers talking about stuff. Most of your episodes, y'all's episodes, are not time-based. Obviously, like, the news about Mars and AFC Wimbledon is, but you know, the questions mostly are pretty evergreen. I was able to binge and go back through the archives. Listening to the podcast feels like hanging out with friends, which I know is, like, super parasocial. I'm not saying we are friends. I'm just saying, like, that's the feeling it gives me. Words are hard, it turns out. It just, it feels like hanging out with friends. And that feels good, especially in a time when I felt, have felt so isolated. I have the book. 
Also during the pandemic, a lot of friends around me have been like late in life, adult diagnosed, ADHD and autistic. Multiple friends said to me like, hey, have you ever considered? No, 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 not me, of course. There's nothing wrong with that, but not me, not me. And then after half a dozen people asked me if, if I thought I was ADHD or autistic, I was like, okay, fine, I'll look into this. And yeah, totally, 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 totally. So for me, one of the ways that my ADHD presents itself is like for a lot of people, a lot of things happening in my head all at once. It's the buzzing, multiple thoughts all at once. I am listening to a song while singing a song, while writing a song, replaying a conversation that I've had already, imagining all the variations of conversations that I might have with someone this sometime about something that we'll likely never actually have. So it's hard to fall asleep at night. I've done all the things. I've done no screens before bedtime, no sugars, wind down, I read a book. Problem is when I'm reading a book that I really love, it's hard to stop. I get hyperfixated and just, I'll read a whole book at night instead of reading a chapter to fall asleep. But one thing that's really helped is listening to the podcast. Kind of weird to say, but like y'all's podcast like puts me to sleep at night in not a pejorative way at all. I love the show so much. I will finish an episode when I wake up in the morning. It's like just enough that my brain is no longer bzzz, it's kind of focused on a thing, but it's like really passive focus, but just enough. It's like a fidget spinner or whatever. Even with like the like ridiculous intro music and <laughs> Hank's like energy at 11 and the welcome, welcome, welcome. It's not incompatible with my sleep somehow. So that way y'all have been in my life a lot the past few years. Most nights I'm falling asleep to a Dear Hank and John episode. Or as John likes to think of it, a Dear John and Hank episode. Somewhere in there I was like, I want more Green Brothers. Got the books. Hank, these books are so good. I got them in hardcover because I like hardcovers and because, you know, you guys like people buying hardcovers. So they're signed. Got the zine with it, which was fun to get like deleted scene for a book. It's hard to say a lot of things fast. I bought the hardcover when it came out. This is a signed edition. I'm so happy that this zine exists. An extension of a book with additional material. And I love how meta it is that it has a review of zines in the zine. It's like fancier and glossier than my conception of zines growing up. Punk rock kid in the 90s where zines were always black and white photocopy. This is really good. I liked it. Your recommendation of tomorrow and tomorrow and tomorrow. This book is nearly perfect. I say nearly because the characters say screw when we know they would say fuck, both as a verb and all the other ways we use screw and fuck. This book is a book that I now recommend to people when they say, what book should I read? I tell them this and I tell them nothing about it. And I tell them, learn nothing about it, just read it. How do I stick the landing on this? This is my calendar of your life poster that uh, I have not finished filling in the dots to catch up to my 43 years old age. I have ADHD and haven't finished this. I really love this idea and this, this feels kind of in the also, mm. you know, I've heard you two talk about the imprecision of language, how words change over time and words mean different things, especially when talking about categories. What is a vegetable? What is life? I heard this thing one time about language and cultural values or whatever. The more words culture or society has for the same concept, the more they value or prioritize that thing. English has such a big vocabulary. Sometimes we lack the nuancedly different words for the nuancedly different situations or context of a concept. I say that because like, I love you guys and I love what you make, but like love means like a lot of things. I love my girlfriend and I love my best friend. I love the Cubs and I love you guys who I don't know, but like I love what you have been for me in the past few years. Not to reduce who we are to like our contribution of work product to the capitalist machine, but what you've made and what you make has been so special for me and there for me in a time when I needed something to be there for me. I love that so much and I'm so appreciative. Thank you so much. I think it's really sweet how close you two are and I know you've talked about how you weren't always that close and I, I am not that close with my brother. We are the opposite of close. It's really cool to see you two care about each other and to not be, um, unearnest, to be totally earnest with your love for each other and your admiration and appreciation of each other and not just out of some like blood is thicker than water kind of, eh, 
but that that you two like seem to actually really like each other and be proud of each other and of each other's work that's really i don't know sweet and cool to see in a world where that isn't very common we don't know almost everything fucking love that so much oh my, it it i really love your commitment to bits your commitments to bit hmm this is like justices supreme doesn't matter anything else about them. Someone with a puppy is just cuter. Someone who has a commitment to a bit is just like smarter and funnier and cooler in my book. And there's this TikTok going around right now of people talking about the bits they do. I wonder if after the bet, the long bet doesn't pan out the way that Hank wants it to. I wonder if the intro will switch to welcome to dear John and Hank, or as Hank likes to think of it, dear Hank and John. That'd be funny. I'm here for that. So I made this video for a couple of people I don't know who make things on the internet. I think we've traded some tweets, is about, oh, and, and Elon kicked me off, so I can't tweet at you. But I made this video to you two to say thanks and to say how much you and what you make have meant to me. The self-deprecation would be, eh, I'm just a small time person, creator, channel, you're never gonna see this. The self-promoting version would be like, send you an email, comments on your videos. Hey, look at me, look at me. I'm just gonna put this out there and I believe in like the algorithm, the interconnectedness that we all have. I'm just gonna put this out there. I have full expectation that it'll make it to you. Who knows when? John, I grew up on the east side of Indianapolis and I have an unsolicited recommendation for you. In the neighborhood called Irvington, there is a very old tree called the Kyle Oak, Lincoln the doobly-doo. I think you should go to there. Any time of the year is a good time. It's just in a lot, on a side street, you don't need tickets, there's never a line, there's never people around, but it's great. I give the Kyle Oak four and a half stars. Hank, I'll see you on Friday. John, I'll see you on Tuesday. You could have a commitment to the concept of bits and you could have individual commitments to individual bits. Commitments to bits, commitments to the bit. No, that's not, that's not it. You wouldn't have a plural to one. So it's, you either have a commitment to bits and or, I think and, you have commitments to bits. I love that.